I'm an author. Uh, I help write the industry standards. I'm very much tools and process agnostic. And my biggest credential is that I'm the guy they call in the middle of the night when the release doesn't work right. So I'm in the trenches and I've been involved with this stuff for a very, very long time. Why am I here? Uh, not too many people have come to a presentation and said that they're before you because of Amazon. Uh, this is actually the truth. Uh, in writing my book on CM best practices, which is right here, uh, Amazon reported a correlation between folks studying for the PMP exam and uh, folks purchasing my book, which I thought was strange because you PMP folks, I figured, had other things to worry about besides configuration management. So I became a little puzzled. And uh, I read through a couple of um, PMP review books, and it suddenly became very clear uh, how configuration management impacts the uh, project management profession. The other thing that happened not too long ago is I was working on a project with a colleague of mine who's PMP certified and he's running the project for the organization and he said to me, Bob, I know you put on the project plan some time to create checklists to build the infrastructure, but we're a little bit behind schedule. So do you think that we could just skip the checklist and just build the infrastructure? And it occurred to me at that moment that he really didn't understand what I do and what its relationship is to delivering a project on time. So I guess the big question is, why are you folks here? And what are you interested in? What are the sorts of things that uh, configuration management means to you? That's why I asked a few of you before when I was trying to filibuster. So these are the topics we're going to cover. What configuration management is, I'm going to get a little technical for a couple of minutes because some of the terminology is hard to understand. And from the review books that I've seen, you actually may get questions about this uh, on your test if you're taking the PMP test. And I'm going to answer the question, why does it matter? What are the touch points to PMP? And most importantly, we're going to talk about what the classic four functions are with configuration management and then I'm going to translate them to English uh, in discussing what I call the core framework and explain what configuration management really is. Uh, I'll touch a little bit about uh, agile development and, of course, IT governance and compliance, which ends up being a very, very important issue. The goals of configuration management. When we talk about configuration management, there's essentially three things we've got to make sure we do. We don't want to ever lose the code. It's really uncool if you're working on a system and you can't go find the version that you, that you uh, use to create the version that's in production right now, make a two-line fix to it, and actually you know, not have the code regress due to the wrong version of a header file or something like that. You also want to make sure that you know exactly what version is running in production. That sounds funny, but there's many organizations that I go into when I ask them, they actually aren't 100% sure of what version of the code is running in production. Now that sounds serious, but let me take it up a notch. One of the organizations where I was doing a configuration management assessment, a CM assessment, makes operating devices, essentially lasers that are used in major surgery. And in doing the assessment of their CM practices, which is obviously a highly regulated organization, Half their technology professionals told me they couldn't tell me what version of the firmware was running on the laser. The other half told me they thought they could. So think about it. Imagine having an operating device. It actually gets updated by the technicians in the hospital, but they don't have a reliable way to ascertain what version of the code is running on that device. Did that scare you a little bit? Yeah, that would scare me a little bit too. Say again? Only if you're the patient. Now, one of the greatest interview questions I ever got was somebody said to me, and this is absolutely true, he said if your loved, was, loved one was on a life support system and you were in charge of release management for that life support system, are you confident that you'd never make a mistake? And you think about it, there are life support systems that use software, and somebody, of course, is responsible for doing the release management. So some of the PM touch points as I see them, and truthfully, I'm here tonight, I'd like you to react to this. And I'm going to give you my contact information. I'm going to be writing a number of articles on this topic. 
I'd like you to very much give me your input. I think the key uh, touch point is managing risk. You, you folks in managing a project plan have to identify risk. You have to work with your other stakeholders to mitigate that risk. A lot of the practices that I'm going to talk about tonight help you to mitigate risk. You also want to manage change. The truth is you want to accelerate change. If you want to be successful in business, you want to make change happen faster. So we're also going to talk about that. You want to make sure that you can control the schedule impacts, so you don't want stuff to cause you to be delayed. So you, that's, that's very much implicit. You want to manage communication. If people don't know what's going on, when the next release is coming, what are the different things that are going on in the environment, that also can be an issue. And of course, with quality management, there's lots of different kinds of planning that you do. Well, one of them is creating a CM plan. And we should talk a little bit about what belongs in that CM plan. So what exactly is configuration management? So here's the technical answer. And then I saw this in uh, one of the review books. So apparently you folks are being uh, uh, given this type of dry uh, terminology. It's configuration identification, status accounting, change control, and configuration audit. OK, we're done. We can go now. Everybody understands, right? I've never understood what that term status accounting means. So I'm going to translate that to English. Really, CM is about tracking and controlling changes to configuration items. And we're going to talk about what a configuration item really is. So let's take each one of these functions. Configuration identification means that you identify, you have a mechanism, a naming convention, a methodology to be able to name all the things that go into a release. I'm quoting CVCAB over here which is a fabulous uh, online dictionary provided by the IEEE. The reason that it's so good that, is that it tells you where that term is used in all of the different industry standards and frameworks. And I'm going to talk a lot about how you want to use industry standards and frameworks as tools because, frankly, they are very much authoritative, they've been well thought out, and they give you a lot of credibility when you're discussing how to implement best practices. So configuration identification has to do with naming things. Identifying things, make sure you have the right binary modules or the right Word documents for that matter. Status accounting is really all about tracking one of those configuration items throughout its whole life cycle. How it gets developed from the very beginning to the end. And by the way, retiring a configuration item is sometimes just as important as getting it out the door. If you determine that a particular applet in a banking system has a security flaw that can't be fixed, then finding where it is and pulling it and uninstalling it is just as important as pushing out the new release. So remember, the life cycle includes eliminating the configuration item just as much as putting it out there. Change control, we're going to talk about this quite a bit, but essentially you want to have checkpoints. You certainly don't want people pushing things into production without letting everybody know, right? That would be very bad. So you want to make sure that you've got, but there's actually different kinds of change control. And I'm going to give you a little information on that as well. Configuration audit, this is really important. Remember I said that medical device, they didn't know what version of the code was on that device? Turns out they did, but the group didn't know that there was a procedure for it. That procedure is called a configuration audit. What that means is that you have a technique to be able to examine the binary and say what version you are. So let me tell you a st true story that happened to me. I was working for the um, uh, organization that does the systems for the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And they called me into a room one afternoon and they told me that I had made a mistake that had crashed the entire floor of the New York Stock Exchange. In their words, stopping the world economy, and somebody actually had to go testify before Congress to explain the mistake that I had made. So actually, I, I, had, a, I had two reactions. One is, my resume updated, and <laughs> the other was, I didn't realize how important my job was. So they actually allowed me to go up to the operations center I, I couldn't put my fingers on the keyboard, they restricted me. Uh, and they had a Unix administrator sit next to me. And he did the commands that I wanted him to do. And I performed the configuration audit. It went and checked each binaries and said, who are you? And he pops out his, his version ID. Two scripts 
had no stamp in them. And I said, it can't get onto the tape to be deployed unless it has my stamp. That's the way my software works. So I know for a fact those two scripts didn't come from me. At that point, the Unix administrator says, whoa, uh, I remember now. When we first got started, those, that code wasn't ready, and I sort of wrote some temporary scripts to just sort of stub it out in, in the meantime, and I forgot they were there. And what he literally was doing was overwriting my code with each release. Now, what's interesting about that is that we all got our bonuses because management said to us, gee, that's pretty cool that you could diagnose that in five minutes. We immediately remediated the problem. It wasn't a fire drill. We knew exactly what was supposed to be in production. And our management actually felt more confident in our release management practices. So that's where you want to be. And I'm going to talk about how to get there. So one of the key points there is when you identify risk, you want to identify a mechanism for controlling risk. So while you folks are thinking about how to set up a project plan to accomplish a goal by a certain milestone, what I do as a CM practitioner is I try to make the release management, the build, package, and deploy, take five minutes instead of two hours. And there are organizations that I go into where it takes them a week to do the release, and using the techniques I'm going to talk about tonight, I can get it down to an hour. So I can eliminate that risk and take that one off the plate and also help you to be able to track all of the changes. So implicit in all of this is that configuration management has to be part of a complete life cycle. I've mentioned two of the industry standards right there, 12207 is an ISO standard and an IEEE standard it actually comes out under several boards, 12207 and 15288. Uh, one is a software st life cycle standard, the other is a systems life cycle standard. Make no mistake about it, even if you don't write the code, even if you just buy the package from somebody, you still need to understand this in terms of a life cycle. So you're identifying each phase of the software development effort. And that is true whether you're agile or iterative waterfall or any other methodology. So I want you to keep in mind as we're talking about this, one of the aspects that you have to consider is what is the whole life cycle of the project? And these are two of the standards that will help you do, uh, accomplish that. And we're going to talk about how they relate to the more specific standards. So a big part of what we have to do in order to make this really happen is have verification and validation. We trust, but we verify. Even though I build, package, and deploy something, I actually write mo more code to check and make sure it's built properly, to check and make sure it got to the right place. And, and how do I do that? When I go into a team and they're making mistakes, usually I get brought in as a guy to help that team stop making those mistakes. And so I'll, I'll watch not only the way that they go about doing their building and packaging, I'll also watch when things go wrong, how they diagnose it. And then I will write software to do that test with every single release. So what I'm saying throughout the whole process, you want to ask your team, do you have verification and validation? How do you trust but verify but make sure each step of the life cycle is being done correctly? And you actually want to build those, these checks into the whole system and the whole life cycle. So you want to answer the question, have the requirements for a specific intended use or application been fulfilled? So I, I want to give you a functional definition, easier to understand what the CM functions are. Uh, because that cryptic jargon is not so easy to really get your arms around. So configuration management is really all about source code management, build engineering, how do you compile things, how do you, how do you actually take the instructions that we write and transform that into a machine readable form. Environment configuration, someone here, I was very impressed, you know, mentioned that one. So actually the three people I asked, I think each one of you hit one of these. Change control, there's seven different kinds of change control, so we need to understand that. Release engineering is about creating packages of the software that can easily be deployed and easily be pulled back. So that involves some development in and of itself. And then deployment, that should be the smallest step of all, because deployment is just turning on the light switch and turning it off, because you do all the other work up front. So, Source code management, you want to make sure that you've got 